Hello everyone and welcome back to Age of Nagash which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma and in this video we're going to be talking things all things Warhammer Quest Curse City again as the box has now gone on to pre-order so as you can see I've got a screen recorder on for this one and what we're going to be doing is we're going to go through the War Scrolls that are now available to download from Games Workshop website for what these models from Warhammer Quest Curse City are going to be like in Age of Sigma. So Warhammer Quest City as well, just a little bit of an update, is that it's a box I tried to pre-order. I was so close to being able to pre-order it from a discount store where you could get it for like £100 it was. Um, but by the time I clicked to add it to my basket, and by the time I clicked to check out, it then became in that tiny like one second window, unavailable so because of that and i can't like afford games workshop price at the moment so i won't be getting warhammer quest curse city not for the foreseeable future so i won't be doing much of a um like unboxing or anything like that of it just simply as i can't afford the box at the moment but anyway enough with that and then we're going to go on to the rules so i've already got all the rules up already and what i'd like to ask you guys let me know your thoughts down below what you think of these war scrolls do you think they're going to be useful do you think they're not going to be useful are you going to use these models in age of sigma are you only going to use them exclusively for warhammer quest curse city let me know all that down below so a few things just to mention because i've already briefly read through these and the first one we're going to look at is going to be the deaf stuff because obviously deaf is best and we're going to start with the lowliest which is going to be the zombies and as far as i remember from when i've read the legion of the gash war scrolls and all that sort of thing the zombies and also the skeleton warriors have not changed at all so that's in terms of the rules haven't changed obviously new models but the keywords haven't changed. We haven't even got, like, for example, these zombies you can see on the screen now. We have, it doesn't even say, like, you know, uh, Death, Soul Blight, like Grave Lord, Zombie, Dub Walkers, uh, Sumble. doesn't have the Soul Blight, like Grave Lord keyword in there. And we know these zombies are 100% going to be in Soul Blight, like Grave Lords because they've shown them off in that army in the trailer for Soul Blight, like Grave Lords. So this kind of begs a question when it's like, oh, does that mean that? The rules of zombies aren't going to be updated in the new Soul Blight Grave Lords or the rules of the Scourge Morris. I believe that they will be updated because number one hasn't got the keyword here. So I really feel like they just re it's not even rewritten this war scroll, but just tweaked it to uh basically just put the new image of the new zombie in the corner instead of the old image of the old zombie. Um, I really think all that's done. The other reason for that is there's a lot of abilities on the zombies and the uh, skeleton warriors war scrolls that say like uh if you're within a friendly unit or you're within like nine inches you can see for the corpse cut here or for the skeleton warriors that say if you're within 18 inches of a death hero i believe it is to get a plus one to your hit now in a lot of books we've seen for the last well since second edition of age of sigma really it's not every circumstance but most circumstances have changed from being within to wholly within so I honestly believe we'll see that change come with Soul Blight Grave Lords, which makes me think that the zombie wash go here, or we get the skeleton one up here as well. Um, this is literally just a quick fix of putting the new picture of the new models in that little portrait on the top right corner of the war scroll and so this is actually what the rules are going to be like in soul black grave Lords. that's what i honestly think and i also think that maybe they don't want to um they don't want to give like information away too early on what skeleton warriors are going to be like what their rules in soul black grave Lords. they want it all to be um saved for when the book drops pretty much so now that we've talked about these zombies and these scarce and warriors that haven't changed, let's now move on to the death stuff that is brand new. So that means new rules. So something I will just say, we have had pictures put up on Facebook. As you can see, I've got on the screen now, which tells us the points of things. So just to quickly go over, the Skeleton Warriors are still min size 10, max size 40, 80 points or 280 if you take the mass regiment discount and the battle line. And the zombies are min 10, max 60. 60 points for 10 or if you take the whole 60 it's for 320 points so again you get discount there if you go for the mass regiment and they are battle line as well so that hasn't changed as well so the points are the same but the most important thing here obviously we have all the order war scrolls up there we'll get to later in this video but right now the death stuff unfortunately everything else in the death side of this box all has to be taken in one big bulk for 680 points 
which makes it really hard for me to tell how many points each model from this would be and makes it very hard to tell um, if it's worth it. But to be honest, I don't think that second part is going to be that hard because we're going to reach for the rules and I'm happy to be proven wrong, but 680 points for a group of these models, I don't think it's worth it. It's going to take a load of your hero slots up that probably aren't going to add too much synergy to your army. Um, and also unique, so you know, things like this can't take, you know, uh, artifacts and command traits and stuff. Now, I don't know if Soul Black Grave Lords is going to help uh, this, you know, bundle of stuff from Curse City out. May do, may like um, give you certain, I don't know, abilities or something we'll get in the new Soul Black Grave Lords books. But in all honesty, guys, I don't know, and I think that's a massive shame there, an incredibly lazy by Games Workshop, just group it all into one big thing. But that's my thoughts and I had to get that out straight away, but we will go into the rules now to see if that can make me feel better about that incredibly huge points price tag of trying to take all this models. You might just go like, I like the Vascry as an example. Um, right, wrong, you can't just take that because there's this many points. Obviously, if you're playing home rules and stuff, you can do what you want, but match play is what we mainly talk about. So. Going on to the rules of these new things, so we'll start with something cool, which is the uh, Varg Scryer. So this is very much like the Vargolf, but I believe the Vargolf is no longer a vampire. I think I remember reading that in their Battletone once that the Vargolf used to be a vampire and everything else um, that like lost to bloodlust, but it's no longer, I don't think. And then the Varg Scryer is definitely more of a vampire, even as the vampire keyword. So this thing. Um, has got an 8-inch move, it's got 5 plus save, it's got bravery 10, and it's got 8 wounds. It has, for its melee weapons, the talents, is 2-inch range, 4 attacks, 3 to hit, 3 to win, minus 1 rend, 2 damage. And then the gaping maw, 1-inch range, four, uh, 1 attack, 3 to hit, three, uh, 2 to win, sorry, minus 2 rend and d3 damage. And that is exactly the same as a Vargolf's attacks, so... I mean, it's not bad, it's good, but it doesn't feel like much originality there. And then going on to the abilities, it's got the Terrifying Howl, which is new, which is subtract one from Brave characteristics of enemy units while they are within 12 inches of any friendly Varg Scryers. So it won't stack if you have multiple Varg Scryers, but I don't think you'll have that for a while. And I do hope I'm saying the name right as well, and <laughs> I'll keep reading it. But what is nice is that currently how we know how Death Banners work at the moment is that they make the enemy minus one to their bravery as well. So you can do some stacking stuff here. There's more ways in death currently to make the enemy uh, minuses to their bravery if that's what you want to go for. And then for its next ability, we have Bounding Leaps, which is one that they showcased to us in a little teaser a little while ago. So you can attempt to charge with this model if it is within 18 inches of an enemy instead of 12 inches, roll 3d6 instead of 2d6 when making a charge roll for this model. That is nice. I do like that. Um, if we are comparing this to a Vargolf, though, a Vargolf has more ways to be able to move. And everything else, a Vargolf can um, fly as well. So, I mean, yeah, this guy's got a better charging um, comparison, but we're doing a direct comparison to the Vargolf. Uh, I think the Vargolf still uh, surpasses it in all honesty it has a better movement as well um just generically and that is for a different army though because that is for flesh eater courts and this is going to be for the soul black grave lords by the looks of things so we do have to wait on that but it hasn't got the soul black grave lord keyword so i don't know if they're going to add it in later or maybe it only requires the soul black keyword because if this guy can't go in soul black grave lords then it, it just really starts indicating that these models aren't going to have much of a play at all in Age of Sigma. And I get it. These models are for Warhammer Quest Curse City. But it's just when they say, you know, oh, you'll be able to use them in your games of Age of Sigma. Yeah, you technically can, but you won't. It does annoy me because they do that a lot. And why? How can they just not write good rules? But anyway, on to the next video, which is Gnarled Hide. So roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this model on a 5 plus, that wound or mortal wound is negated. Now that ability, I really, really do like. I think that's really good. Makes it more survivable than your standard uh, Vargolf. And um, yeah, this guy gets, you know, probably a, a death save learn around somewhere he's near here and everything else. But a 5 up compared to a 6 up makes a huge difference. Um, and if you were to compare it to the Vargolf, it would need Unholy Vitality put on it, which is probably maybe not the smartest uh, use of resources there. So, yeah, I do quite like that. And then for its keywords, it's got Death, Vampire, Soul Blight, and Varg Scryer. So I think as it's a standalone thing, it's quite good. If it was quite cheap in the points as well, like below 200, maybe like 
160 or something like that. I could see this being like a threat. It sort of hangs around on the flank, something like that. The enemy can't ignore it. And if they do, it's really going to hurt them. Unfortunately, actually got to take it in that big block of 680 points, I believe it was. I'm just, I'm struggling to see how this fits in. But I think it's a very cool model, at least. And then going on to um, the next War Scroll, which we're going to have a look at, which, um, well, I've got up here as a Skeleton Warriors, but like I already mentioned, this has not changed, so we won't read through it. And then going on to the next one, which is going to be the Kozi, uh, Kozizag, Zagi, probably pronounced wrong, apologies, but the Night Guards. These are the Undead Ogres. So they've got a 5-inch movement, a 5-plus save, a Bravery 10, and 4 wounds. So kind of like standard Ogres, I think, but obviously a bit um, slower. And then we've got, for as many weapons, the uh, uh, Bardicae. Probably saying that wrong as well. It's got a two inch range, two attacks, three to hit, three to win, minus one round, two damage. And then for its abilities, it's got the Deathly Vigor. So roll dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this unit. On a five plus, that wound or mortal wound is negated. That's really nice. But I do think when I read through these earlier, that is a, um, that's a theme I'll see through this, which is really good. But again, feels a bit lazy that they all get given it. And that is it just called a different name or is exactly the same yeah just like a different name that does funny enough exactly the same thing but it's a good ability and then we've got servants even in death so add one to the attack characteristics of this unit's um bards i'm just gonna call it while it is wholly within 12 inches of a friendly radical the wolf which is obviously the big named character um who's the vampire of the cursed city so yeah that's cool i can see synergy there um, Radikar's also got an ability where he can give uh, units in range of him like an extra attack as well, I believe. So you could pump these ogres up to uh, four attacks each, um, which is, you know, four attacks each, two damage each. You know, so that's the potential of, uh, what's that, like 16 damage from these two? But are you going to get 16 damage through? Probably not, but um, they're all right, is what I'd say. Nothing um, to write home about, but they're okay. And then we've got keywords death, zombie, ogre, soul blight, uh, cosgard, and night guard. So, um, yeah, they're all right. Uh, that's 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 pretty much it, really. And then the next thing we've got is going to be the uh, Vircos uh, Bloodborne. So these are like the feral-looking vampires. So you get three of these, I believe. We'll have a quick look at the points thing, just to remind myself. Uh, yeah, you do get three. So min size three, maximum size three. That's the same with the. Uh, night guard as well the ogre so you take min two max two so you can't buy multiple boxes of uh cursed city and then basically just go now i've got a unit of four of them it doesn't work like that so uh where are we back to these guys so they have a eight inch uh, sorry eight inch movement a six plus save bravery 10 and three wounds so not a bad amount of wounds there pretty nice and then the melee weapons so the piercing blade so one inch uh range three attacks three to hit three to wound Marshal one rend, D3 damage. D3 damage is pretty nice. Um, obviously swingy, but it can be certainly punchy, especially with three attacks each. So that's nine attacks from just the three of them. And then you've got vampiric uh, agility. So when this unit makes a move, it can pass across terrain features in the same manner as a model that can fly. Yeah, that's cool. I think I pretty much called that, and I think probably quite a few people um, out there as well called it, because as soon as you see these models and they're climbing all over terrain and all that sort of thing, you think, yeah, that's cool. But it is a nice ability. Um, I've got, uh, I've ran Necropolis Stalkers from Ostrich Bone Reapers that have the same ability. Basically, if you spend a command point or a relentless discipline point in the army, and they can move over terrain, which really does help, because it means that you can set yourself up behind terrain so you can't really get charged that easily and then as soon as it's your turn you move over the train and then you charge the enemy so you can really use train as a um good like uh defensive block basically and then you've got for its next ability blood sense so add one to the wound rolls for attacks made by this unit uh that target a unit that has one or more wounds allocated to it yeah that's nice because then it's now threes and twos i like that and then you've got Shadow Far. So roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this unit on a 5 plus. That wound or mortal wound is negated. Oh, pardon me. But slightly yawning because good ability, but just copy and paste from everything else. <laughs> just give it a different name. Um, again, there's a little bit of lore on each one to say how it's different. But yeah, it's, it's a good ability. Uh, they need it. So they've got a bloody 6 up save. So these things are going to die to shooting unless you cover the board in bat swarms. So that. Still only going to make the enemy only minus one hit um, from shooting, so... And they're not a hero, so they won't get a look at Sir. Uh, you've got Death, Vampire, Soul Blight, and then their name. 
So, I think they're nice. I like them. Again, it's hard to justify with that huge 680 points uh, sink, but I do quite like these guys. Uh, they just are very fragile. And then the next one to look at is going to be... Was that all of them? Yeah, that's all because of the ogres. But yeah, it's cool. So the next one we're going to look at is going to be Watch Captain uh, Holgrim. So this is the big named skeleton character. So he's got a 4 inch move, a 4 plus save, bravery 10 and 5 wounds. Not bad, just quite average for a skeleton there. Well, like a skeleton hero basically. And then we've got for his many weapons the Cursed Hellbird. So a 2 inch range, 3 attacks, force to hit, freeze wound, minus 1 rend, d3 damage. Yeah, swingy, but um, all right. You know, nothing to write home about. Um, he's not. He's clearly not a combat hero. And then we've got um, the ability to so the cursed helmet. So if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made were cursed helmet as a six, that attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. So yep, that can make him a bit better. But again, uh, still swingy because um, you you can't rely on that. And the four to hit does hurt. If it was a three to hit, three to wound, I'd be more happy. But then going on to his command ability, he has Disciplined Advance. So you can use his command ability at the start of your movement phase. If you do so, pick up to three skeleton units wholly within 18 inches of this model until the end of that phase. If you declare any of those units will run, do not make a run roll. Instead, add four to the move characteristics of models in that unit until the end of that phase. So... Um, Okay, so the first thing to mention here, skeleton. So I believe that could work on your Grave Guard and your Black Knights so if it can. I mean, I, I can't remember last time I checked the keyword, but they're all skeletal units, so it should have the skeleton keyword for each of those. But what I will say is, like, it's it's better than running, right? Because the average stop, well, the low average you'll get in a run roll is a three, and the best average you'll get in a run roll is a four. So being able to pick three units and just give them like the good average on a run roll. If you want to get them up the board and you've got no hesitation of them making a charge this turn, you're just lining them up for maybe uh, the next turn. Then I can see how I've got play. If you use it in Death March, I can see how um, that can be good because you could use it to try and um, have your skeletons move, I believe it's four inches in the hero phase, and then four inches here and then move normally, which is like 12 inches. However, I mean, it's only costing you one command point to do this, but if you really want to get like a block of skeletons up the board, and you're probably not going to have three massive blocks, but I could be wrong there. Um, I'll just spend a command point and make him run six, because it's further, if I really needed them to get up there. Um, but it's not it's not terrible. What I will say, what I do like about it, it's different. We haven't got this copy and pasted somewhere else, so it's all right. Um, if it was like give them an extra attack though, we have seen that somewhere else, but it would be great because then you can really make skeletons have even more attacks. Um, I mean, it's a big rant, yeah, I'm just, I find it a bit, I mean, movement is great, but if it, you could move four and you could still charge, brilliant, I would love it. But because by the sounds of things, it's instead of um, running, so it counts as a run, you can't do it, but I think maybe an FAQ. And if you can do this and then charge, I like it. And then the keywords we've got: Death Skeleton, Death Rattle, Hero, Watch Captain Holgrim. So then going on to the, I don't know why I'm yawning all the time, but anyway. So going on to a really cool looking character, we got Gorslav the Gravekeeper. So he's got a four inch move, a six plus save, a bravery ten, and seven wounds. So what I'll say there is six up save, not good, but that seven wounds is pretty surprising. Maybe this guy is like bigger than I think he is. So then for his many weapons, he's got the Gravekeeper's Spade, which is um, at two inch range, uh, three attacks, force to hit, freeze to wound, minus one, rend, d3 damage. Is that the same as the... Just the same as that bloody Hellbird. I mean, it's just copy and paste away over here, isn't it? Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, I mean, that that's what... I didn't expect this guy to have as good an attack as the, uh, the Watch Captain Holgrim. I mean, you know, clearly they... <laughs> we'll carry the same weapon in uh, Olfenkarn, but, but here we go. Um, you know, this wouldn't make um, a Death Corpse of Craig uh, soldier jealous by that spade, shall we just say. So then going on to the ability. So we've got Keeper of the Corpse Gardens. Roll a dice before you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this model if it was within three inches of any friendly zombie unit. On a four plus, that model or mortal, sorry, that wound or mortal wound must be allocated to 
one of those units instead of this one, uh, this model. So it's like a Necromancer ability can pass off wounds. So yeah, that's nice. And then we've got the Command ability, Arise, Arise. So you can use Command ability at the end of your movement phase. If you do so, pick one friendly sample zombie unit that has been destroyed. A new replacement unit with half of the models from the unit that was destroyed, random fractions up, is added to your army. Set up that unit wholly within um, 9 inches of a friendly model with its command ability and more than 9 inches away from uh, enemy units, each destroyed unit can only be replaced once. Replacement units cannot themselves be replaced. So let me just have a think. This guy is essentially a zombie loon shrine. So the loon shrine, if you're not aware, is the um, I believe it's called Lutron. It's the uh, faction train piece for the Gloom's White Gits, which basically can bring like um, a destroyed unit of Grots that's like bring it back half the size, which is stabbers or shooters essentially. Um, that guy can do this, which is cool. Um, yeah, I think that's a good command ability. I like it. It's good, it's different. We haven't seen it in this army before. Um, so yeah, I do like that. But then we've got keywords, so death, zombie, deadwalkers, hero, gorse of the gravekeeper. And I believe this guy is the first hero for deadwalkers in Age of Sigma. So that's pretty cool. And then going on to the next one, which is going to be uh, Torgullus, the Chamberlain. So I do really like this model. I think it's really cool. Um, he's got a five inch movement, a six plus save, uh, bravery 10, six wounds. So nice six wounds there. Uh, Save six, he's a necromancer, really, so not a huge surprise. But then the melee weapon, so claws and fangs, so one inch range, four attacks, five to hit, four to wound, no rent, one damage. Nothing to um, write home there. And then his companion, so he's got all his little pets and stuff, not reading them to all that, but he's got like a rat and all that sort of stuff, and a little cat and a bat and uh, a bird, and I probably should have just read it all, it would have been quicker. But anyway, so going on to the trusted lieutenant. So at the start of your hero phase, if this model is within three inches of a friendly radical the wolf, Roll a dice. On a 4 plus, you receive one extra command point. Nice. And like you go, or oh, is it worth taking around a car? The wolf as well? Yeah, you have to. So it comes in the package. So that's a that's a good 50 50. You'll get an extra command point if you take this guy. And then the Grave Sand uh, Felicia. Don't even know how that's pronounced. So roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this model. On a 4 plus, that wound or mortal wound is negated. On a 1, that wound or mortal wound is not negated, and this ability cannot be used by this model for the rest of the battle. So I think that's actually a really nice ability. The only um, issue with this is that when you roll to do your death save, let's say you call this a death save or an after save, you don't, and you've got, I don't know, 10 of those after saves to make, don't roll them all at once, uh, roll them one at a time. And as soon as you hit that one, this no longer works. Um, so that's quite good. I mean, like, you could, I don't know, like on a really good average, uh, you've only got one in six chance of, uh, well, it's not even a really good average. You only got one in six chance of you rolling a one. Um, so you should pass off quite a few wounds before he gets to it. But anyway, going on to his magic. So he's a wizard. He can attempt to cast one spell in your hero phase and attempt to unbind one spell. And the necro, uh, necro, uh, tissin. Bolt, whatever it's called, um, has cast and value of 6. If successfully cast, pick one enemy unit within 18 inches of the caster that is visible to them. That unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. In addition, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by that unit until the start of your next hero phase. That's good. I do like that. It's, um, it's very important that this guy has uh, good magic because... Let me oh no, he's a death mage, so I'll just check his keyword. So he would presumably be able to get access to a spell law. Um, in the new Soulblood Gravelords book, but no, I do like that spell. It's a um, it's a nice way to get D3 mortal wounds through, and also that subtract one from hit is good. And we know in death currently at the moment we can stack minuses to hit, so yeah, I do like that spell. And then going on to the next one, is it a new slide? Oh, where's the? Sorry guys, hang on one second. Have I not got Radical the Wolf up? We'll get that up now. Um, as he is kind of important. Surprise, surprise. Um, so, Radical the Wolf, when it wants to load properly. Um, let's refresh this. Okay, cool. So, this one has got a, quite a big war scroll. No surprise there. So, this is obviously the big baddie and presumably makes up the main chunk in terms of like a separate model 
towards the um, price tag of 680 points. So he's got a 5 inch move, he's got a 4 plus save, he's got Bravery 10, 7 wounds, um, he's got the uh, Vikos, uh, Vikos Barrow Blade, which is meant to be really powerful. They mention this a lot, how powerful this weapon was. <laughs> like, owned by an ancient vampire emperor and everything like that. One inch range, four attacks, freeze to freeze, miles per run, D3 damage. So this magical vampiric blade, or the, the Barrow Blade, from um, this uh, ancient and very powerful vampire emperor, it's the same attack, funny enough, by a normal Vampire Lord. That's weird. <laughs> I might, there might be an ability down here that I haven't read and makes that a lot better. But, you know, it's just what a coincidence. Um, so then getting on to the hunger. So at the end of the combat phase, if any models were slain by uh, wounds inflicted by this model's attacks in that phase, you can heal one wound dedicated to this model. Cool. Yeah, that's like a normal Vampire. Then the Supernatural Strength. If an unmodified... Wound roll for an attack made by this model's many weapons. A six that inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. Apologies, it's better than a vampire blade as long as you roll sixes to wound, which wish that was sixes to hit, but oh well. And then going on to the grave sand, can't be not, uh, bother to try and pronounce the second part. We've got roll a dice each time, yeah, okay. Okay, so it's the same as what the Chamberlain had, so. When you do your death saves, what you want to do is roll the dice individually. As soon as you get to a 1, it stops. But on a 4+, plus, you ignore that damage. So that is good. Then we've got Deathly Invocation. So that's the spell, uh, not spell, sorry, it's an ability from the Leans and the Gash book, essentially, which um, allows you to heal Sunball models. And he can pick up to three different uh, friendly Sunball units uh, within 12 inches of him. And you can heal up to D3 wounds of... Uh, to those units or d3 like wounds worth of models to those units if they're like one wound models so even things like die walls and stuff but anyway going on to the magic so he can only cast one spell and he doesn't have a unique one it's just arcane bolt and mystic shield until that soul black grave lord book comes out and even if he's in the soul black grave lord book because we, we can't confirm that by looking at these war scrolls um i think there might be an faq to patch them in uh, could, could be something we could see. Uh, yeah, so he hasn't got Solid Grave Lord. So um, I hope you enjoy casting your Arcane Bolt Mystic Shields because that's all this guy's going to do. And then going on to the Command Ability, so Call to the Hunt. So you can use this Command Ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly model with this Command Ability that made a charge move in the same turn. Add one to the attack characteristics of many weapons used by friendly units wholly within 80 inches of this model. Until the end of that phase, a unit cannot benefit from this command ability more than once per phase. I like it. Let's just look at what it does. So, add one to the attacks for um, uh, used by friendly units, wholly within 18 inches of this model. So, as far as I'm aware, that benefits all your allies. If you can take allies with this warband, if you can call it that, um, it benefits all your allies, it benefits obviously all your death stuff. Um, so yeah, that's a very pretty loose ability there to get those extra attacks. Um, you bring in a mercenary of a giant, um, of those mega gargants, he will get that extra attack. That's as far as I can read it. If there's somewhere, if there's like a written rule somewhere that means that the ally would not benefit from a command ability, uh, let me know. But as far as I'm aware, that, that's how I remember. And, um, even though it's just death stuff, um, yeah, that's pretty good. I do like that. However, it has to make a charge in the same turn. This guy moves five inches. There's no other way to make him faster here. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, can't rely on that at all. Oh, God. Uh, these things are not good. And then keywords, death, vampire, soul blight, hero, wizard, vampire, lord, and Radicar the wolf. Oh, dear, Radicar. Oh, dear, 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 dear. So we go back to the points over here. And all of those characters, well, all the units I just talked about, Pop and Sketch and Warriors and Zombies, you get all of them for 680 points. They can't be taken as Soul Black Grave Lords unless they uh, patch in an FAQ or something like that. Um, and yeah, that's what you get, 680 points. So my personal preference is, um, what would I say with them? Um, don't take them because they're really not worth it. But if you're playing a narrative game, oh boy, if you're playing a narrative game, you are gonna love these guys, especially if you're not playing with points. Um, 
Yeah. It's just like, that's like the most expensive, like, Underworlds warband I've seen. Because obviously with those, like, Underworld warbands, it's like, use your hero and then, like, these little um, companions. And you have to pay for the companions and the hero or one and the unique. This takes it to a new extreme. Um, I think it's incredibly uh, lazy, uh, not giving them individual points. I don't, if it wasn't out of laziness, I don't know why they did it, in all honesty. Um, unless it's like, oh, because like, it makes it like, they didn't want people to pick and choose what they want to take. They want to just like bring it all like thematically into the absolute bollocks, complete laziness. That's my opinion on it. Um, and the rules are uh for those units i'll be honest they're not like shocking it's not like when you read like some of the war scrolls and you just go why do they even write it some of them are all right to be fair like if you could take some of them separately and stuff like um the chamberlain i think is pretty solid um and some other ones as well that i've mentioned i think you know they could have some play but unfortunately they're lazy stuck them all at 680 points and that is why you won't see them on the table and if anyone wants to put them on the table just to try and prove me wrong or something really you're just gonna waste your time playing that game because 680 points so you might as well spend another 200 points and waste your points and taking the gash and losing the gash at that point so yeah that's my honest opinion on it but i'm happy to see that the skeletons and zombies are not lumped into them as well for a ridiculous uh what would that be 780 points at that point so yeah anyway so disappointing war scrolls are all right they're not too bad they're not fantastic but how you have to use them in age of sigma by taking them all in one go won't work out because it's just not good enough basically it's just like i said lazy and all that sort of thing anyway i don't want to keep moaning about it because we are talking about more than just them in this video because we will move on to the order stuff and the first thing we're going to look at so i did this in order of what it was on the website so we're just going to correspond to what it was in the point so uh let's see what then is so on here let's just get the points for him so this guy 100 okay practically all 100 points but from some different ones so these are all leaders and they're all unique so no artifacts and no command traits as i already thought and um so the van alton is he van alton where is he where is he where is he where is he, where is he? uh yep yeah, von Anton. so this guy 100 points unique he's got a five inch movement he's got a four plus save he's got bravery six and five wounds fairly standard for like a hero um like a human sized character if you will so he's got for his missile weapons he's got the uh nobilis so a nine inch range one attack three to hit three to wound minus one round one damage try not to forget about this attack that's all i'm really going to say about it um, you know, like, he's 100 points Scottish unit attack, it's not bad. Okay. And then for his, uh, Geist Sever, for his many weapon, which is 1 range, 3 attack, 3 to hit, 3 to win, last 1 rend, D3 damage, not bad. I mean, it's only one less from, uh, <laughs> this little guy, <laughs> so yeah. Um, not bad. I see a lot of D3 damage being a very typical thing to give these, uh, people from Cursed City. Um, so then we have for the abilities, which is point blank shot, so... If an attack made by the uh, Noblesse scores a hit on a target within three inches of the attacking model, that inflicts one mortal wound on the target um, and the attack sequence ends. That scores a hit on the target. Okay, so if you're in um, if you're in combat and you shoot the thing you're in combat with um, and you just rolled a hit, that's one mortal wound. Okay, yep, that's, that's better. That's not a god-awful shoot attack. That's okay. Um, and then we've got Unrivaled Duelist. So... So attack one for hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons that target this model. In addition, if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a melee weapon that targets this model is a 1, the attacking unit suffers 1 mortal wound after all of its attacks have been resolved. That's pretty good, I like that. You can make the enemy do a lot of damage himself and subtracting 1 to hit is pretty nice. So it makes this guy quite survivable and a bit of a pain for the enemy to deal with. And then we got the uh, Denison of Ulfen Khan. So, Ulfen Khan is, the, is a city keyword. This means that this model cannot gain an other city keyword if it included if it's included in a city Sigma army. See the stronghold of order, battle trade, battle zone, um, in the cities of Sigma. And then keywords, we've got order, human, cities of Sigma, Ulfen Khan, hero, and then his name. So yeah, so the big thing about that uh, Ulfen Khan bit here. So he can't be taken in a certain city in cities of Sigma. So he can't benefit from everything the city has to offer. Which is something we see repeated throughout a lot of these Order War Scrolls, all of them that can be in Cities of Sigma, they're all from Ulfenkant, so they can't be from a certain city. And that's why I don't think you'll really see them in your games, apart from maybe one or two. 
but we will keep reading through them to see that if I can read something I missed or you guys when I'm reading through it if you go oh actually, I actually think that's quite good let me know in the comments like I said with any of these models I'm happy to be wrong with the sort of like honest and negative um review I'm giving off them because I want them to be good I want them to play played in Age of Sigma and if anything else I'm just disappointed so if you're um, if you've got a different opinion let me know that in the comments down below so I want you to be right and me to be wrong on this and then moving on to our next one which is going to be Octran Glimpscree, I believe it's pronounced. He is going to cost us 110 points. Let's see what we're going to get for those points. So he's got a 5 inch move, a 6 plus save, bravery 6, and 5 wounds. He's got his melee weapon, which is the Hex Brand. So this is a 2 inch range weapon, 1 attacks, freeze to hit, freeze to, uh, force to hit, sorry, freeze to wound, minus 1 rend, d3 damage. So your standard wizard attack in there. And then for his abilities, he's got. Master of Mortality. So each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to this model on a six up, that wound or mortal, uh, mortal wound is negated. So it's all right. I mean, um, I don't think it will keep my life for too long, but it's better than nothing. And then he's got the Dissen of Ulfen Khan ability again, which means that he can't be given a other Cities of Sigma uh, city keyword. And then for his magic, um, he can attempt to cast one spell and attempt to unbind one spell. He knows Arcane Bolt, Mystic Shield, and then the Withering Hex, which we did do earlier in a preview what Warhammer Community did, but I'll read it out again now. So we've got Withering Hex, so cast on base six is successfully cast. Pick one enemy unit within eight inches of the caster that is visible to them. The unit suffers D3 mortal wounds in addition for the rest of the battle uh, that the unit is affected by Ultra's Hex. Subtract one for the move characteristics of a unit affected by his hex so again um it's nice it's d3 mortal wounds it's not as good as the minus one to hit one from the chamberlain minus one to uh move is good i mean there's there's lots of um fast moving units out there where minus one to their movement isn't really going to make a difference anyway but for things that don't really have stupidly good like you know movement 14 or something like that and they actually move let's just say six Going down to that five could make quite a big, bit of a difference, I would say. Um, I'd say subtracting one from a charge roll would be probably better if it could be that instead. But subtracting one from an enemy movement isn't bad. Um, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't stack. It just says if it's affected by the hex, not affected by the hex. You know, multiple times. Um, so yeah, it's still good. I think the biggest thing you have to do with this is just keep reminding your opponent that it's only you know minus one to move every time they go to uh, to move the thing. But it could make a difference between them deciding if they want to um, run a unit or not run a unit, which could make a bit of a difference. And then for his keywords, he's got Order, Human, Citizen Sigma, Orphan Khan, Hero, Wizard, and Octran, Glimpscree. So, um, alright for 110 points. Um, but the problem is, because he's only Orphan Khan, he can't take, um, and he's unique as well, so he can't take Command Trace Artifacts. Um, but then he can't take, if you take him in, I don't know, let's say Living Cities, um, as far as I'm aware, he can't get access to those Living City spells because from memory as well, let me know if I'm wrong obviously in the comments, but from memory, those are for Living City Wizards. And he is not Living City. So, yeah, it it's an, it's frustrating is what it is. Unless they were to bring out a city of Olfenkar and they were to bring out rules and it's actually in this book that I haven't got access to, which is coming out, but I doubt they're bringing out a whole city rules for Age of Sigma for Ulfenkan, but it'd be great if they did it for, I don't know, a white dwarf or something, that would be cool. Um, but anyway, so with that we're going to move on to our next one, which is going to be um, Zeitingale, so how many points is she? So she's 100 points, so she is cheaper, um, and she's got a 5 inch move, a 6 plus save, a bravery 7 and 5 wounds. It's got a missile weapon, which is the Heaven's Bolt uh, Stiletto, so 8 inch range, 1 attack, force to hit, freeze to wound, minus 2 rend, 1 damage, not bad. And then the melee weapon, so he's got the Thrice Blessed Maced, so 1 inch range, 1 attack, force to hit, 3 to wound, minus 1 rend, D3 damage. Basically a wizard attack there. And then for the abilities, we've got the Celestial Prayers, because it is a priest. Is this a priest keyword? Uh, yeah, it does have a priest keyword as well. So, in your hero phase, this model can chant one of the following prayers. If it does so, pick one of the uh, prayers and then make a prayer roll by rolling a dice. On a 1 to 3, the prayer is not answered. On a 4 plus, the prayer is answered. So it's only a 50-50 for this prayer, but well, for the prayers of uh, Zeitingale. But 
It's still quite good. I think prayers are that much above spells because the enemy just can't unbind them, which is huge. Because so you get what you want on a 50-50, which is uh, much better than the uh, like most often times when you try and cast a spell. So the two prayers she has. First one is um, in, invocating uh, touch. So pick one of uh, one friendly model within three inches of this model. You can heal up to D6 wounds allocated to that model. Really like that. Now, importantly, it's not D6 wounds worth of models or anything like that. So you can't bring back, you know, D6 Phoenix Guard or something like Emerald Life Swarm can. Um, but it's still going to be useful. It's still going to be good. Um, and means that even if she can't be attached to one of your cities, she's still got a use in the army. And then the next one she's got is a commentary blast. So pick a point on the battlefield with 8 inches of this model that is visible to them and roll a dice for each unit within 3 inches of that point. On a 4 to 5 that unit suffers 1 mortal wound. On a 6 that unit suffers D3 mortal wound. It's alright, I don't think it's particularly good because um, you can't really guarantee those 6s and just 1 mortal wound's okay but it's only on a 4 up you're doing it and it's only things within 3 inches. Um, so I think the uh, invocating uh, touch is the best one to heal those d6 wounds. Um, you could potentially put in your army for that if you want to have like a, I don't know, a griffin smive a bit longer or a derfu or something like that. Uh, stay alive for a bit longer. Um, I think it's a good prayer. And then we've got um, Dissonant of Elfen Khan, which we've already read through, so basically Elfen Khan can't be taking anything else. Um, and then keywords, we've got Order Human, Citizen Sigma, Elfen Khan, Hero Priest, and then uh, Selena. Uh, Zaitin Gale. So she's right. The only reason I take her is for the D6 heals, uh, like D6 wounds worth of heals. Um, is it worth 100 points? Probably not. But, you know, some of these war trials aren't fantastic, so I thought I would point out the things I do like. But going on to the next one, we've got something much cooler, which is going to be the uh, Brute Tog. Um, what's his name? Brute Tog Corpse Eater. So let's have a look to see how many points this guy will be. Only 120. He's an ogre, so that's pretty cool. Um, so, he's got a 6 inch move, a 4 plus save, a bravery 7, 7 wounds. Nice amount of wounds there, and a 4 plus save is nice. Uh, for his melee weapons, he's got the Marrow Smasher, or Marrow Masher even. Okay, so 1 inch range, 3 attacks, 3 to hit, 3 to win, minus 1 rend, 2 damage, not bad. And then the Gut Gouger, so this is a 1 inch range, 1 attack, 3 to hit, 3 to wound, minus 2 rend, D3 damage, nice. And then the Gulpin Bite, which is one inch range, one attack, freeze and freeze, no rend, one damage. So, um, not, you know, like a monster in combat, but, you know, a fairly hefty beat stick for 120 points. And then we've got, for his abilities, the Devourer of the Enemy. So, at the end of the combat phase, if an enemy of enemy models were slain by wounds inflicted by this model's attacks in that phase, you can heal up to D3 wounds allocated to this model. If any of the slain models had the death keyword, you can heal up to D6 wounds allocated to this model instead. And it's got the distance of Olfen Khan, so he can't be taking a, um, another city keyword. Um, I think he's alright for 120 points. Is he worth 120 points in your army? Probably not, because he doesn't really add any synergy. He's a bit of a tougher... You know, he's a fairly tough hero. He's going to go around and do a bit of damage, um, but you probably want the points playing else. <laughs> Honest thoughts on that, but he is, he's cool. Like, and then we've got, was that, I think that was the, no, we've got the, uh, here we go, something that is different, we've got uh, Dagne um, Holdenstock, so how many points is the Dwarf going to cost us? He's only 100 points, this chap, uh, let me try and find the right one again, so, only 100 points, 4 inch movement, a 4 plus save, uh, sorry, uh, 8 bravery and 6 wounds, so nice amount of wounds there for a Dwarf. For his uh, missile weapons, he's got the Harpoon Gun, so this is a 16 inch range, 1 attack, force to hit, freeze to win, minus 2 end, D3 damage. Uh, melee weapons, so this is the Belaying Axe, so this is a 1 inch range, 3 attacks, force to hit, freeze to wound, minus 1 rend, 1 damage, not great, but that shoot attack's not too bad. And then for his abilities, he's got Gold Plated Repu uh, Reputation, so if this model is included in a Cannon Overlord's army, it starts the battle with two shares of Aether Gold instead of one. To be honest, I don't really play um, Cannon Overlords too much. I think that's pretty good, but I think because um, the Aether Golds can be good, because I believe they allow you to access Triumphs if you spend them. So this guy being able to access two Triumphs once per uh, battle really is, is pretty good. And then we've got the next ability, which is Reel them In. So if an attack made with 
This model's harpoon gun scores a hit on a monster. If that monster is not slain after that attack has been resolved, roll a dice. On a 4+, plus, that monster is skewered until the start of your next shooting phase. While that monster is skewered, each time it makes a move, it must finish the move at least as close to this model as it was at the start of the move. I think that's pretty good. Um, I can see you taking this to try and hold back those enemy monsters, but uh, like you could tie down Marathi and all those sorts of things with it, but you you need to roll two four ups to get this off basically, um, and you've only got one one attack. So when what do I mean by well actually you need to if it's, yeah scores a hit yeah so you only need to roll like two four up on one dice, um, so chances are you won't and. Also, what happens if this guy dies? Because then where's the where's what base are you using for the model of this guy for how far the monster can move around? Um, because it's until your next shooting phase, so it could be a couple of turns and the enemy gets a double turn on you, it's like. Um, I just thought it was an interesting question there. Um, yeah, he's alright. Uh, I don't really think he's probably that great. Maybe if you're a Cowden Overlords play here, oh this is exactly what the army needs, but I'd probably doubt it. We've got Order, uh, Druidan, so Cowden Overlords, uh, Barak, uh, Horner, is, is that a new one? Not too sure. Hero, Skyfair, and Marine, and then his name. Um, so, alright, I like his Ruo Min trick, it's nice, but I don't know how often it's going to go off. So then, going on to our next one, which is going to be Jelson uh, Darak, very cool Vampire Slayer here. So. This chap is going to cost us, let's do this first, um, where is he? He's 100 points, so not expensive. He's got a 5 inch move, a 5 plus save, a bravery 7 and 5 wounds. He's got his missile weapon which is a judgement, so 18 inch range, 1 attack, freeze the hit, and then 4 wounds see below, because they basically teased this as well earlier in the week and I read through it, but we'll go for it again to remind me. And then we've got the melee weapons, which is the Ardent Blade, which is a 1 inch range, 3 attacks, force hit, freeze of wound, minus 1 rend, d3 damage. Not not too bad. Um, so yeah, then the uh, we'll do the judgement first, shall we, for the missile weapon. So, if an attack made with judgement scores a hit, the attack sequence ends and you must roll a dice. If you roll, if the roll is at least double the target unit's wounds characteristic, one model from that unit is slain, after all of this model's attacks have been resolved. If the roll is less than double the unit's wounds characteristic, the unit suffers one mortal wound after all of its model's attacks have been resolved. So when I reviewed this before, I was quite critical about it, and I had someone who said that in the comments said that they actually think it's pretty good, you know, being able to snipe you know, a Chaos Warrior or Painbringer or anything that's sort of like two wound mark, a blood warrior, something like that. And again, yeah, it's cool to be able to take those things out. However, that's not gonna probably change the state of the battlefield and change the state of the game by just removing one of those models. Um, and if you're paying 100 points for that, like the, your opponent's already winning if you're <laughs> if you're trying, like this guy could take out uh, like five Chaos Warriors over the course of a game, let's say, and that's 90 points. So it's let like it's just not very useful i think yeah, it's all right but it's an all right ability it's not great but i think if anyone says that you know oh it's pretty damn good um it, it's wrong that's my opinion so then we've got the firewood stakes so at the start sorry sorry firewood stakes at the end of the combat phase you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of this model and roll a dice add one to the roll if the unit has the death keyword on a three plus that unit suffers one mortal wound um so, like, if this guy is surviving somehow with his 5-up saving combat, you could do a few more wounds because you've got Judgment, and then you've got Fire Stakes, um, but, yeah, like, he's got a 5-up save. He'll, he'll die pretty quickly. And then his Dissonant Evolve and Karn ability is there just to say that if you want to include him in one of your certain, synergy, uh, certain cities for a bit of synergy, uh, no. Basically, it's a real shame that they've all got that uh, huge shame. What I really wanted when we first saw Curse City, what I said when I reacted to it, was I'd love that each one of these characters um, that's from Cities of Sigma that we know were going to be in this box, like Jelson and the other ones, if they could each be from a different city in Cities of Sigma. And now each one of those cities has got a unique hero just for them. Might be like this and not particularly worth, you know, writing home about, but at the same time, 
it would still be nice to give those cities a unique hero. But they didn't, basically. I understand why they made it Ulf and Khan, but bear in mind, that's depends how long they're there, obviously, in the story of the narrative of Cursed City. But, you know, they didn't they didn't all come from... They didn't all were born and raised in Ulf and Khan. Some were. Um, but, yeah, so I think they missed the trick there. And then the keywords, we've got Order, Human, City, Sigma, Ulf and Khan, Hero, and Jelson, Durok. Cool. And then we've got the next one, which is Captain... Uh, Amelda Brazkov. So, uh, Captain Amelda Brazkov is 110 points. Let's see what she is going to be like. So, she has a 5 inch move, a 3 plus save. Nice. That is nice to see a 3 plus save. Uh, Bravery 8, 5 wounds. She's got the melee weapon, which is Dawnlight. So, 1 inch range, 3 attacks, 3 to hit, 3 to win, minus 2 rend, D3 damage. Nice. Um, and then we've got for the abilities Death Blow. If the unmodified hit roll for an attack made, with Dawn Light is a 6, that attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. And then we've got the Shining Exemplar. So while this model is within 3 inches of any enemy units, do not take Battleshock tests for units wholly within 9 inches of this model. So that's something that could add synergy to your Season Sigma army, despite the fact she can't be from that certain city. That's something that can add city, uh, sorry, can add synergy to your army no matter that she's missing that keyword. So I, I do like that. And then there's an Evolve and Calm, which is basically just an ability on all these water scrolls, like I already said, to just ruin them a little bit. And then we've got keywords, Order, Human, Caesar Sigma, Evolve and Khan, Hero, Captain, Amelda, Brazkov. Uh, so yeah, she's right, she's pretty good. Like a free up save and stuff, but um, and for Battleshock Immunity, uh, could be good, but like she could still be wiped out fairly easy. Like if you're using her as your lynch pinch to make sure everything doesn't run away, and then also holy over nine isn't actually that big of a range for it. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not really, as you can tell, feeling these ones at all. Um, like may maybe could work, but you probably want to spend the 110. That's the thing. You want to spend the points on something else. It's not like oh, here's a free 110 points to put this model in. There you go. It's going to help your army out. You'd probably rather put something else in your army. Um, so then going on to something much cooler though is uh, Qualafis the Exile. So this is like the Wood Elf um, one we've got for the army, which actually has the Sylvaneth keyword, which is cool. So a new hero for the Sylvaneth. So she is also, let's have a look at the points before we go completely. So she's 100 points, so cheaper as well. Um, she's got a 6 inch move, a 5 plus save, a bravery 7 and 5 wounds. She's got her missile weapon which is Winter's Call which is a range 24, 3 attacks, 3 to hit, 3 to wound, minus 1 rend, uh, 1 damage. would be great if it was 2 damage or something. With that 1 damage it's not enough to um, really kill anything to be honest with you. She's got a 30 inch threat range but what it could do is chip some wounds off like a, a character at the back or something the enemy has. So then she can maybe kill her over a few turns. Maybe something like that. Um, and then the melee weapons is the just an elven blade. So this is one inch range, three attacks, fours and fours, no rend, one damage. And then we've got the ability, so strike and scene. The cover modifier adds two to the save rolls for attacks made with missile weapons that target this model instead of one. That's nice as so you can build a free up save to try and survive. So how I'm seeing it like gradually chipping wounds off an enemy character at the back or something. She can just stay in that terrain. She'd probably survive long enough to maybe do it. And then she's got Okanari, so if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with the Winter's Call is a 6, that attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. Yeah, so it's just going to help her try and chip those wounds off. And then she's got uh, Guardian of the um, Engala Wield, something like that, um, which is a Glade um, keyword, which means she can't be given another Glade from the Sylvaneth book which could mean two things. We've got a good thing and a bad thing here, right? So the good thing, maybe there's a new Glade coming out for the Sylvaneth. Maybe there's a new Glade, which would be cool. It's a new sub legions for them. It could add lots of stuff to them. It could really help out the Sylvaneth. That would be awesome, right? That's what we all want to see. What this could mean is that she can't be taken, uh, or she can't gain the Glade keyword of any of the other Glades, which is probably the more likely chance of that's the case and there's no new Glade coming. So it's just missed out on Synergy. Which is like Games Workshop just going out of their way to make you not be able to play with their models. Which is just weird or make the most out of them I should say. Then you've got Keywords, Order, Sylvaneth, um, Angler, 
Wield Hero uh, Calathus Exile. Well, I'm surprised because I believe they said that she was a Kanofi. I think they said that. I think they said she was a Kanofi. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, Calathus, just reading a little bit of the lawyer. Calathus seeks vengeance upon the vampire Radica and his uh, Kosigarg who slaughtered her Kanofi king. Why does she not have the Kanofi keyword? Like, I'm. Unless that's not a keyword in that warband, I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't seen it for ages. Unless that Sylvan F uh, Kanofi warband didn't have the Kanofi keyword. Um, I, I'm not really too sure. But with that, <laughs> I'm going to leave it because I'm pretty sure that is. Uh, Captain. Yeah, that's all of them. That is all of them. So, I understand I've been a bit negative in this review. And partly. That's going to be down to three things. Number one, I'm generally quite tired, but I wanted to get this video out to you guys. Number two, I'm disappointed. I didn't get my copy of a discounted um, Curse City from one of those websites because literally within five seconds sold out. Um, and then thirdly, I'm disappointed with the lack of effort from Games Workshop with these War Scrolls. That's the main reason why I'm disappointed. And it's not even like they're terrible. Some of these are much better written than some of the other uh, like box games that are translated to Age of Sigma, like some of the uh, war bands from uh, Warcry or Underworld. Some of these have had more effort put into them, but then they've also had more effort to try and make them less useful by not giving like some of the Cities of Sigma ones, not being allowed to be given a other city keyword. And then things like for the death side, oh, zombies and skeletons, yeah, that's cool, you can take them like separately and all that's good. The rules haven't changed um, though, so you know, just already take the ones you've already got. And then the second part of that goes, oh, all the new interesting stuff with the death. Right, take it all for 680 points. That's the best I can do. No splitting. It's just like when you see one of those uh, buy, say, um, what's it? Buy, sell, or swap Facebook group posts where it's just like, here is, I don't know, 7,000 points of Stormcast. I'm not splitting. I want free grand. Like, most people are not going to pay that. And I kind of feel like that's the same situation here. All right, let's get it up. Just like 680 points, like for all that, like you're only going to take that if you really, really like those characters and those models. That's the only reason you're going to take it. Um, something I'm surprised about, and I've actually just only realised this, is this, again, this is only just someone's taking a picture on their phone. It's not me, it's someone on Facebook, blah, 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 blah. But there's no like little thing for like the, uh, the bat swarms or something. There's no points for them, uh, which is unusual. Um, I haven't got the War Scrolls those or anything either, so maybe they just don't have rules, which is a shame until Soul Black Great Ball comes out. But we're really going to have to wait and see. But like I said, so what I'm more interested in though, so that's my view on it, my honest opinion of what I think about these War Scrolls. What I want to hear are what are your thoughts on the War Scrolls for Warhammer Quest Curse City? Are you happy with them? Do you think you're going to use them? Or are you like sort of underwhelmed and disappointed? Like. I am. I'm glad they've got War Scrolls. Like, you know, I'm happy that they've got War Scrolls rather than just, like, no rules at all. But we were expecting them to have War Scrolls anyway, so that's where the, uh, you can say fairly or unfairly, that's where, like, I build up the expectations from. And then that's when it just comes crashing down when it's things like this. And it's not the first time we've seen that sort of, uh, <laughs> like, lack of effort when Games Workshop to try and make things work. You know, surely if they made these War Scrolls really good, people would buy this box as well. But a lot of people are buying this box so it gets sold out. But People would buy this box um, to go, oh yeah, I don't know, like, um, like, uh, what, what was his name? Like, Jelson Derrick as an example. Oh, his rules are amazing. Like, especially if I take him in, I don't know, Hammerhall for some reason, he can do this, this and that. I have to buy this box to get him. Like, or I have to split it with a mate to try and get this guy. Or they made it about the Varg Scry or something like that. It would just, would make sense. I don't know why they do this time and time again. But anyway. Here we are. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, <laughs> it was a bit, a bit of a funny video, but I hope you enjoyed it. The honest opinion here, of course. And um, if you did enjoy it, make sure you smash that like button, that subscribe button, that bell notification if you haven't already. Uh, they're free buttons. You can click them. They're literally all in a row. Massively helps out the channel, and I would really, really appreciate it. And if you've got any questions or your thoughts or you think wrongly to what I've said, Put it in the comments down below and I'll be happy to uh, have that discussion. And um, if you think this video is going to be helpful for anyone, make sure to uh, give it a share. And if you want to join the conversation about this, make sure to join the Discord that's in the description for this video. There will be a link to it 
there. I do also want to do a massive shout out to the people who make this channel possible, which are going to be my patrons. Because of these people, I can continue to make videos to try and help people get into Age of Sigma um, and continue the Age of Sigma journey and give honest opinions like this when it comes to if you want to actually like buy this box or seeing if you want to use those models in Age of Sigma, don't waste your money. But my uh, patrons are my YouTube members, so my top supporters are going to be my Morgas, which are going to be Jonathan H., Philco, Bleed Red, and Christopher G. Thank you so much for your continued support, guys. That's a really, really um, high support you're giving to the channel, and it's really helped keeping it going and make me being able to continue this and make me be able to basically justify how much I spend into this channel. So thank you so much for that. And then my vampires as well, which are going to be Mir, Martin S, Rouse321, David A, Ronnie H, Doug P, Spare Bear, Christopher H, and North Drop. Thank you as well for your continued support at that tier. It's a lot of support as well, so I do appreciate that, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you so much for continuing up, guys. And then my Necromancers, which is going to be Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77, Dice Sagas, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Quad, Cranky Wombat, Christopher F, Christopher C, James S, Steve T, Robin S, and James T. Thank you all for your collective help as well. It really does go straight towards keeping this channel going. So thank you to everyone who is a Patreon and YouTube member. If you'd like to become a YouTube member or Patreon, um, please check out the join button next to the subscribe button. Essentially, it'll allow you to become a Age of Nagash member. What that means, you can give anything from as little as one pound a month and it goes straight towards keeping this channel going. Or if you'd like to become a Patreon, you'll find a link to it at the top of the description down below. If you click that link, it'll take you to my Patreon site where you can give anything from one dollar a month and it all goes straight towards the channel. As I always said, if I didn't have support from my Patreons and YouTube members, wouldn't be doing YouTube as it takes a lot of time, effort and can be expensive as well. So with that aside, guys, I'm just really glad that you came and checked out this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit more like off the cuff and all that sort of thing, but I wanted to give you my personal opinions on what I've seen when I just first reacted to these War Scrolls um, today. So I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, let me know your thoughts down below. So with that aside, guys, I'm going to thank you again very much for watching this video. Remember until next time to stay safe by staying hygienic, wash your hands and wear a mask for God's sake. And then more importantly, until next time, remember that Nagash is all and all is one in the gash.